And, uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so yeah, as, as we just said, this session is on autonomous breach protection. Um, so thank you for the introduction. So I'm going to skip this slide. Um, what I wanted to do, first of all, was just take it back a little bit and look at the paradox of today's current breach protection. So as you walk around this event today, there's some fantastic technology out there. We just heard from Darktrace about the great capability they have with, with AI. But we're still seeing and hearing about breaches every day. We're still seeing a diminishing return on security investments. So what's the reason for this? So we believe, first of all, um, obviously we have this great technology, but it's point solutions within the environment. So you're only getting a subset of visibility uh, when you're trying to resolve these certain challenges. They're often hard to deploy, trying to get these different technologies to talk to each other. Then there's the manual integration. You invest in this technology, you want it to try and talk to each other. So if you have a network-based technology, you may want it to talk to your endpoint technology to share analytics. And you also only get partial threat coverage as well. So the challenge is when I'm talking to customers on a day-to-day -day basis, I hear time and time again is staff shortages, staff, uh, you know, skill sets around cybersecurity. Um, the time it takes um, to manually deploy solutions and, and train up on these solutions and understand the data within um, you're seeing within these interfaces, and also obviously budget as well. And we're hearing about since 2017, and it doesn't seem to be going away anywhere, we're seeing new advanced threats um, within the industry. So fileless attacks are still increasing. So from 2017, we, we first heard about fileless-based attacks. And these are some of the news articles that I could find uh, on the internet, all talking about different types of fileless attacks. And they're also known as living off the land attacks using legitimate, legitimate tools within operating systems to try and compromise an endpoint. So these are some of the most common tools that we saw uh, within our security operational center. So PowerShell, WMI, Office Macros. But there's over 100, over 100 Windows system tools that can be leveraged to try and compromise an endpoint. And these are some of the statistics from our, uh, so at Cynet, we have uh, our security operational center. And last year, we saw a massive rise on, on these fileless-based attacks. We saw advanced persistent threats using these techniques, meaning that they're using different attack vectors. Down the left here, you see um, some, of the, some of the different types of malware that were being used in these fileless attacks. And this is an example, and I like to refer to these attacks as a hybrid, uh, hybrid kind of attacks because most commonly we always see some sort of phishing campaign. And within that phishing campaign, it tends to be an Office document. As soon as the user opens that Office document, they're asked to enable a macro within there. From that point is where we see this living off the land technique. We see WMI called PowerShell, we see an obfuscated script being run. We then see encrypted communication downloading the payload. For this example here, we saw persistency in the registry. We saw command and control from that. And then after that, we saw additional payloads being downloaded, which may be ransomware or data stealing kind of modules. This was another example, FT code, which again was a fileless based attack. But the ultimate goal from this one was ransomware. I read a news article um, uh, only last week. I've seen a new variant of this one where it's not only encrypting files on the operating system, it's also stealing data credentials as well from email clients and web clients. So we're seeing even ransomware malware examples evolving. And I'm not even going to try and pronounce um, this one, but the reason I wanted to mention this one is because we've seen this one being used in different types of attacks across multiple stages. We've seen MS it be delivered into MSPs. We've seen websites uh, that have been compromised, legitimate websites, and replacing the downloads with ransomware type of attacks. And at Cynet, we've also done 
um, a security blog on this, which is quite interesting to, to read about this and, and just gain some more information around it. So what's the solution to this? Um, what we've done at Signet is we've created what we believe is the first autonomous breach protection solution. And we like to give this analogy of an automated car. So if you look at uh, an automated car, what it needs to do is, first of all, it needs to have complete visibility of what's in front of it, what's on the road. It needs to understand the context. Is it a pedestrian? Is it a vehicle? Is it a cyclist? And then it needs to intelligently decide to act upon. Does it need to stop? when it sees a pedestrian in front of it. And it has to be very accurate in the way that it does that as well. And at Signet, what we've done is we've created a solution that first of all gives complete visibility of our customer environments. So what we want to do is give visibility of all activity across files, across users, across hosts, and across networks. The next thing we want to do is intelligently understand the context of what we're seeing across this activity, and then decide whether it's malicious or whether it's legit. And then decide upon it. Do we need to block the traffic? Do we need to isolate the endpoint? Or simply disable the user? Fundamentally, where you want to go with autonomous breach protection is you want to try and take some of that ownership from response teams having to manually go and respond to a data breach we can automatically mitigate against a breach for you. So if you look at how autonomous breach protection works, it's powered by what we call um, Cynet Sensor Fusion, which is a combination of lots of this technology you see here today. So we're monitoring with our sensor arrays, we're, mo we're monitoring all of this activity across files, processes that, process activity, memory activity, traffic from the endpoint. It goes into our sensor fusion so we can look at the context and generate the true context. And from that, you get complete monitoring and control of your environment across all of this activity. You get detection and prevention against some of these sophisticated attacks that I mentioned before, and also response orchestration. So you can create your own playbooks and you can automatically respond to attacks. So if we look at a, an example of what this could look like, so here we have um, some YouTube activity, we have no screen interaction, we have a host that's been uh, operated remotely, uh, we, it's been done outside of working hours, and we see an attempt to upload a file. It goes through our autonomous breach protection sensor fusion technology, we deem it to be data exfiltration. And from that, we can take precise action, which means we can either block the traffic to the command and control center, we can isolate the host, disable the user, and mitigate the attack from spreading. So in a nutshell, from a capability perspective, this is the platform of what we're trying to offer with our autonomous breach protection platform. Um, so, as I said, it's powered by our sensor fusion, which is a combination of behavioral analytics, heuristics, fuzzy hashing techniques. From that, first of all, you get monitoring and control, like I've mentioned. You get full inventory management of your endpoints, your servers, desktops, laptops, across Windows, Mac, Linux. We do vulnerability assessments with our agent as well. From that, we can help you consolidate all of these different technologies, have a single platform to manage these different types of technologies. So we have next-gen antivirus. We have network analytics in there. We have endpoint detection and response. We have full forensic capability. We also have deception capability as well. As I said, think of Signet more as a platform. And then obviously, from a response perspective, we can help build into your existing processes and build your playbooks to help respond to attacks. And backing all of this up, we have a security operational center. So the slide I had with the statistics before on the defileless attacks that we see, we have a, a team of offensive security people that are constantly monitoring our customer environments and offering incident response, threat intelligence, and proactive threat hunting as well. 
So just to finish, just some of, so obviously uh, some of the benefits of Signet. Um, we can obviously radically uh, reduce time it takes to invest multiple different technologies. We want to try and help you consolidate, have a single console. Cost reduction in the different types of technologies uh, that you might be looking at. You can have it all run through a single platform. Um, you can help empower your security teams by leveraging the automation within Signet and doing the automated prevention. And obviously, with our 24-7 Security Operational Center, you can leverage their skills and capability. So with that, I'd like to thank you for this attending this session. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat>